Starting a big project with only its newborn idea may feel deceivingly structured and motivating, but the more you extend it into being, the more chaos you will find. Its original structure distant. If you've watched my videos, you know that the only games I've completed are short-term projects. The larger a project is, the more time it takes and the more I slowly divert from its structure into chaos. For a while, I've had the need to remove this bad habit, which is how I stumbled on a quote by Dr. Jordan B. Peterson, where he essentially says that how we can travel through our chaotic worlds is by compartmentalizing it into small manageable pieces, focusing on one independent small piece whilst being blind towards the rest, then rinse and repeat. So in this video, I try to apply said methodology into programming, more specifically, a new project. Along the way, learning the fact that the methodology already exists, and it's been under my nose this whole time. Let's explain the project idea. So since the coronavirus has kept us all in our houses, I will create an island where we can travel to and breathe. But not just any kind of island, a procedurally generated island. In non-fancy terms, that means that for each instance of an island I create, each will be unique and different. Just like you. It's hills, corners, and height based on a random texture called the pearl and noise. Now, during this time, I was making sure everything I did and was going to do was well documented. So that I don't freak out in three weeks when this little texture thing turns into a bunch of dark deviant stuff. Then we subdivide the black to white color range into colors, representing height regions. You plug that bad boy into the pearl and noise, and boom. Already we can see land. So we turn that texture into a flat plane, then giving a height to each color and double boom. Islands, kinda. By using radial noises, we can concentrate the height, represented by white, towards the center, giving us an individual island chunk. Then I worked on the second part of the procedurally generated islands. Pseudo-randomly spawned objects. Using the dark arts of irrational fractions, I coded a way to customize how to spawn the environment. Finalizing every unmentioned yet critical detail, the view was quite nice. In my documentation, I added a web-released to-do list. That means you can actually see and interact with this current version of my island generation project via the link in the description below. Version 0.0.4 was to be a lighthouse feature, so after some dark mathematical wizardry, I managed to do it. Yet the artist who helps me couldn't finish the actual model, but that's okay. So this is when something interesting happened. As you know, this project is an inquiry into ways to structure long-term projects into existence without being overwhelmed by its increasing complexity. From this stems my attempt to document and organize everything, before, whilst, and after development. Then I saw this, a game development conference talk by Seth Koster. The talk was essentially about structure. More specifically, a set of practices called DevOps that adds structure to complex development projects. So this whole thing I've been trying to crack was already a thing. Then I realized something even more interesting. There was another set of practices called Agile, and I've heard of Agile before. The backend, if I understand it correctly, I'm briefly looking over this, is that right? Mm -hmm. okay. 
I've been taking a software development course at my uni where the professor will talk about Agile, never really explaining why we actually needed it or how it should be something that directly affects our reality, to the point where three months in, one student said, But professor, what does Agile mean? And we all laughed because we all shared the same boat. So why am I saying this? Well, I've learned way more by myself than in university, and I know this might seem off topic and a radical thought, but it's my truth. I think university teaches you really well to follow instructions, and you're not expected to know what these instructions are for. Just follow them and you'll get an A. And if you graduate, guess what? You can follow more instructions in a 9 to 5 job. Now it's alright if you like that, but I suspect many of us want more than being a small cog in a big machine. The German writer Goethe once said, I hate everything that merely instructs me without augmenting or directly invigorating my activity. If you watched my videos, you know how scared I am of shaders. So in an effort to face my fears, I made the version 0.5 and 0.6 be about shaders. And without jumping into explicit boring details, it was detrimental. But I learned so much this time around, particularly about triplanar shading, which is a shader for texturing terrains. I also learned about ocean shaders using waves, or much rather, sine waves. This trigonometric function can be used to replicate the ocean. I bet your math teacher didn't teach you that. Finalizing and combining these two versions, plus borrowing an aircraft script from this guy and an aircraft from this other guy, we get the following. So what's next? If a set of islands is an archipelago, then we can create an archipelago, right? So in order to create an archipelago, we first need a map to interpret islands into objects in space. And that's where our old friend Mr. Perlin comes into play. This time, we say that if the color range is between here and here, then that will be a blue spot aka the ocean, else it's an island. We plug these conditions and boom. Then realizing that an island chunk followed by another island chunk would look weird in our case. So we added another condition for this not to happen. We then interpret each 2D pixel into either an ocean object or an island object and voila, a 3D archipelago. After some 404s, we managed to generate an archipelago. So now near completion, we swap the generation sprint from its testing phase into done and begin version 0.8, serialization. Now I don't know if that's the right word, but what I mean is a way to store all those chunks and then call the chunks near the player. like. Minecraft. So I began doing some of my dark wizardry. On a side note, I'd like to say that between juggling university and mine competence, this project took me almost two months to complete. As you can see, I ain't no savant. Now what you ain't seen is how inefficient this startup generation thing is. And I don't need to put that in. I could act like my shit don't stink, you know, but it do. So actually I'm only putting this cause I'm gonna fix it. You know, that's the next step, optimization version 0.0.9 gang gang at first i tried doing threads but unity plus threads ain't a pretty boat to sail you know so i figured i could use coroutines and limit the spawn rate with a variable customizable per person i could use a loading screen but i don't know at that point i wasn't thinking that much anymore thankfully that was the end finally done with version 0.1 procedural Using this plain asset, this is everything put together.
In summary, compartmentalizing chaotically complex projects and goals into small manageable pieces, then exclusively focusing on one piece per effort, might be a great way to structure your chaotic world. At least for me, it's the first time I've managed to stick and complete a two-month chaotic project. So thank you all for watching. Like and subscribe if you actually enjoyed. It genuinely helps the YouTube algorithm love me a little bit. And have a good day. Till next time, I'm signing out.